So, hey everyone, this video is a video that I didn't think I was going to do, but here we are. Through my research about Web ODM, one of the other things that I learned about it was that it now offers support for the Mac M1 chips, the silicon chips. So I purchased a Mac Mini M1 almost a year ago specifically for doing my video production and doing my still images and some other post-production work for my business. The Mac M1 until recently hadn't run any software for two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling. Several weeks ago, I migrated my Metashape over to the M1, and that's run pretty well and a little faster than I expected. But with all this work that I've been doing recently with Web ODM, I thought, okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to load this now course, I got the most bare bones uh, Mac Mini M1 you could get. So 8 gigs of RAM, um, 256 gigs of drive space, not a lot of space. So I do have a lot of external drives for doing videos like this. But my big concern was, are we going to overwhelm this system or is the system going to handle it nicely? So one of the big things I'm going to have to pay attention to when utilizing this system is how big are the files? How, how large are the models going to be? And can we handle it? At the moment, I've got 161.9 gigs, so 162 gigs of free storage space on this machine. And like I said, we've only got eight gigs of RAM, but the M1 works a little different. So with that said, we're doing this together. Um, <laughs> learning by doing and hanging out with, uh, with folks watching this video. So I have downloaded the WebODM setup um, from WebODM. I did purchase their download license a couple of years ago. And we're going to open this up. And what do we have here? So we've got the install manual. Oh, we don't need instructions, do we? Oh, we've got the thank you. And then we've got the Web ODM Manager. So what I'm going to do right now is the standard thing I do for a lot of installations on Mac, which is just drag the application. Whoa, getting a little scary here. Dragging that down to Applications. So we have now moved it into Applications. Are we still going to avoid that install manual? Now, I did a Windows video recently for Web ODM as well. And reading the installation manual there is kind of important, but we're going to wing it here. So there we go. Under my applications, we have the Web ODM Manager, and that manager is now going to pop up. Let's see, is an app sent? I'm going to tell it OK. So it's not uh, it's not the smallest file size here, but we're opening it up for the first time. So this is what you're going to see if you are loading this on one of your M1 Macs as well. So taking a little bit of drive space for sure, but nothing big yet. We haven't gone over a gig, so that's fine. Um, this is as new to me as it is to you. So like I said, we're doing this together. We're going to give this a whirl and see how easy or difficult the installation on the Apple Silicon is. And now I've noticed that it says downloading Docker because it also needs Docker desktop um, for our virtual machine environment here for creating our containers. So it's downloading Docker right now. We're going to see what happens next. Just about done. So half a gig. And it is installing Docker as well. So Docker is going to create the containers for Web ODM. And it's doing this all as one process, so everything seems to be meshed together pretty well so far for the installation. So checking over on my drive space, we've uh, dropped down to 160. So when it's all said and done, we're probably going to take up a couple of gigabytes here. And now we're launching Docker. So it's actually, let's see, that uh, Docker desktop needs privilege access. If we ask for your password, OK. And there we go. Let's see. Error message, no such file or directory. Ah, see, we're running into a small issue here. So the service agreement has changed. I'm going to accept their terms and say OK. Are we going to run into a problem with this? I don't know. We'll see momentarily. All right, so it says it's launching Docker. There's no containers found yet. There's Docker. So 
And we've got tip of the week turned on here, so I can go turn that off later. Uh, vulnerabilities with Docker scan. All right, I'm going to close that. And so there is Docker Desktop for running our web ODM application. And up on the bar uh, for the uh, for the Mac Mini, you'll see up on the bar that we've got the Docker symbol up here. So we can jump to the dashboard, preferences, we can quit out of it. But we've actually got Web ODM still loading up right now. And so, yeah, it's downloading a lot. So we are taking some drive space, by the way. Take a look on over at my Macintosh hard drive. We are now at 157 gigs still available. And it looks like we've got some downloading yet to do. So this was one of the reasons why I was concerned about loading up a bunch of modeling software onto my particular uh, mini M1. I didn't go with the bigger drive and we didn't go with the additional RAM. But out of curiosity, I've just got to try this out. And that's why I'm bringing you along on this particular install. So we're going to pause it here for you. And once it's done with its downloading, we'll resume the video. All right, so there we go. And we are into Web ODM. So that was that. It took a few minutes. And let's see right here. Right now, we do have Web ODM Manager 1.3. It is up and running. We also have our Docker desktop. So that is up and running. And one of my curiosities, let's go ahead and grab our Chrome browser here. And as you'll see, it did launch Web ODM um, on my browser. So it looks like everything has come together. There was one little warning message that I didn't quite get um, during that time that you weren't seeing me on video. But um, I think everything looks to be OK to me. Now, one of the things that I'm going to want to do first, let's go ahead and minimize that Chrome window. So here we have Docker. And one of the things that I want to do in the Docker, I would like to go actually check out my settings here really quick. So Web ODM's running. So start Docker desktop when you log in. No, I don't want to do that. In include your virtual machine, time machine backups. No, we're not going to do that. OK. Uh, we're going to leave that as it is. Send usage statistics. Sure. Show weekly tips. Yes. Open Docker dashboard at startup. No. And uh, use Docker Compose V2. And we will go ahead and keep that as it is for the moment checked off. The next thing that I'd like to take a look at is my resources. So here we go. Um, like my other Macintosh install over on the 2017 iMac, uh, we can actually make some changes. So this is a quad core system um, for the uh, mini M1. So actually, what am I saying? Not a quad core, eight cores. My apologies there. So get a little excited to try this out here. Um, so we have four CPUs available. Let's bring it up to five. Do we think we can get away with six while we're uh, recording as well? I'm going to say OK. And we're going to bring this up to, well, let's see. We've got eight gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and set that to four gigs for the moment, OK? So there we go, setting it to four. Swap space. Let's see here. I will be happy with four gigs of swap space. And disk image size right now is set to 59. I think we will keep that right there. And so basically 60 and 7.4 is used. So now I need to apply and restart this. So this is going to take a moment. So we'll pause again. And there we go. Looks like everything came out OK. I'm going to go back up to Docker here, go back to the dashboard very quickly. And I think Web ODM might have stopped itself because we we're making that change. Let's see here. Let's go down to diagnostic. All right, looks like Web ODM didn't shut itself down, so that's fantastic too. So it looks like we're ready to go, and this took under 10 minutes process time to get this all set up. So we've got our dashboard, as we've seen previously. We've got the GCP interface if we're adding GCPs. Diagnostic, Lightning Network, Processing Nodes, if we wanted to add nodes, and then our administration. 
So this looks the same as both the Windows version and the standard Mac version as well. All right, let's go back up to dashboard. So the next thing that we can do in our installation is actually start up a first project. So we've got a first project right here. And by the way, so you're seeing the welcome screen for the first time on my video series. And they let you know you need at least five images. Should have more than 65% overlap. If you're doing 3D, 83% overlap. And a GCP file is optional, but in can increase georeferencing accuracy. Let's go in here and actually, I just moved over a folder for us to use, downloads. And this is our small 98 image uh, model that we've used previously. So I'm just gonna bring this all the way over. Let's select our images. We're not doing any GCPs yet. And let's just grab those images. So once again, the last time I did this over on the iMac, it was maybe 14 minutes long. I'm not sure how long it's going to be here on the Mac Mini. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And instead of this name, we're going to call this M1 Test 1. And the processing node, we're going to go with automatic. That's the one that's already created on our machine. And our options, we can do the default version. We can do a high resolution. We can do a fast ortho. We can do a digital surface model. We can do four setups. So they've got some presets here for us, but we're just cruising right along here. And resize the images. Yes, I'm gonna resize those down to 1500 right now. And let's hit review and let's start processing. So once again, we're probably gonna take a break from this in a few minutes, and then we'll resume the video um, once the model is finished processing. But right now I'm just checking out, it's uploading our images. We've only got 98 here, cruising right along. And then it's going to go into its processing mode where it will be uh, compiling everything for us. So we'll wait till we get there and then we'll return to the video once, uh, once this is done. Also, I'm quite curious as to how long it's going to take to do this particular model. So we went with their default settings, like I said, and we're going to talk a lot more about settings down the road, don't worry. So for the moment, it's resizing the images and then it will be compiling. And we, in the meantime, will take five from the recording. Okay, so here we are, we're back. I took a stroll away from the computer for a couple of minutes, anticipating that this would take a little while, which it didn't. So here we go. The M1 test right in front of us, 98 images as I've run previously on the other Mac and ran it over on the Windows system as well. Uh, five minutes, 58 seconds for the same quality that I had done uh, both on the Windows system and on the other Mac that I have. I'm just gonna click this drop down here really quickly. So. We have our assets, so we can download all of these, the ortho photo, surface model, point cloud, textured model, camera parameters, camera shots, quality report, all assets. We can take a look at the map, either in 2D or 3D. And so this is looking, you know, really good. I'm up and operational in under a half an hour, no major issues. We had one little strange message from Docker at first, but it seems like everything is okay here. And let's take a look over at the surface model version. Once again, not perfectly aligned, but pretty darn close. I think some GCPs would definitely help us out there. And we can also show all of our camera locations. So we've seen this previously um, in other segments of this class series. Bottom line, uh, this runs on the M1 without a doubt. And we'll be doing further testing with this, but let me minimize this really quick. So one complaint, one concern that I have here is that we now have 142.8 gigs free. So I know that we're using some swap. I also know that this was a sizable install. I'm going to my about this Mac really quick, just checking out the storage now. So because the fact that uh, I chose to go with a smaller drive, I do have some concerns about running larger models on this, but this has also spurred me to think, especially given how quickly we just processed this 
particular model, that utilizing a Mac M1, uh, the Mac Mini M1, if I had gone with the uh, with the setup with a um, over 500 gig drive and with additional RAM going from 8 to 16, that this would probably be blazing fast for uh, for web ODM. So there we go. Never thought I'd be loading up uh, three-dimensional modeling applications onto the M1. Hopefully it won't impact anything else as far as performance goes, but we'll have to see. But in the meantime, it's doable. It works. You've seen it from start to finish in all under a half an hour's time. So I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to go off to start toying around with this a bit just to see, um, you know, how it runs. So, okay, everybody, that's a wrap for this video. So we have installed WebODM on a uh, Mac Mini M1, and it runs it.